Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right on this little video, we're going to be starting the process to breed Harlequin Rasboras. Now, I was going to do this last year. Sadly, I lost a couple of my fish and um, things didn't go too well. But I've just picked some more up. I'll show you them shortly when we put them in this tank. But this Monte Carlo, believe it or not, is a, a ground creeping plant. has decided to go ballistic and go right up to the ceiling in the tank. So we've got to clear some of this out. So open it up because I've got some... Um, Amazon swords at the back there and some Anubius over on this side there and they're going to be laying their leaves sorry their eggs on the underside of the leaves when they do so but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to clear out all this Monte Carlo I'm not going to waste it I'm going to plant it in the in the tank next door with some of the little crebensis in there which uh, I've got rid of some of them but some of them still need new homes and um, and then we're going to replant some of it in amongst the media clean it up a little bit scrape a bit of algae off, get it all ready, give it a little water change and then we're going to put them in and then hopefully after a couple of weeks of feeding up nicely on live food we'll have some little eggs and we can teach you guys all the tricks and trade how to breed them okay. Right okay guys we are back and it's been two weeks later they've all settled in now nicely been showing signs of activity of breeding males chasing females around now I'll just go just go through a little bit of the background on what we've done with this tank okay now we removed all that Monte Carlo on the right hand side on the base of the tank there in the substrate to open up those leaves so they can lay the eggs on the underside and hopefully we'll get some of that action first thing in the morning tomorrow morning um, I've been feeding them up heavily on Daphnia and bloodworms okay so they've been conditioning them up for that couple of weeks as you can see, she's the one on the left-hand side being chased there on the surface by a male and um, nice and fat, full of eggs and rearing to go. To sex these guys, males are slightly smaller and uh, can be smaller and the fins are a lot, well not a lot actually, they're, they're, they're subtly more red than, than the females, okay? The females are a little bit more washed out than the males, you can see that if they keep still for five minutes. You'll see that male by her. Oh, there we go. I think we might have a bit of action there already. No, nope, that was a false, a false go that was. She's just testing the leaves, I think. So hopefully a bit later on in the video we'll see that. I put these videos together obviously, so if it jumps ahead or a little bit, it's because I've been filming these over the last couple of weeks and um, to get the action for you guys to see, okay? Temperature wise, you're gonna be a one around, I don't know, 20, 27, 27 degrees, a little bit warmer, pH of around six. Uh, just slightly acidic water, okay, that's what you want. Just that slightly acidic water for them. Obviously, I've made that. I've used rainwater from a good pure source that I've got here in my house. And um, and you obviously, you can add other things as well, like bog wood and different things. I've got um, some almond leaves in the rear section of this tank as well, because it's got a rear filtration in this little cube. And I've put some bits of driftwood and things and stuck them down in there because I didn't want to upset them too much so it's quite handy having a filtration at the back so you can add things in there to change your water parameters but over the last couple of weeks I've been slowly dropping that pH down because it was at around 7.5 um, and I've slowly dropped it down to 6 which will then trigger them to start spawning these are a beautiful little fish one of my favourites one of the first ones I think you keep when you start keeping tropical fish and um, those are the neons but we've bred the neons already um, if you haven't seen that video, go back and have a look at that. That's how to breed neons. Um, one, two, three. I think there's about four four videos I made of that, right through to releasing the, the fry into um, their own tank. And that was going back about a year ago now. We bred those guys here. But these are all settled in there nicely now. Like I said, pH of around 6, temperature around 27. Um, keep the lights low-ish. I've got a very low little little t5 bulb in this one it looks quite bright because the camera really does pick up on me on the light but it's not actually that bright and when they're going to breed for you it's first thing in the morning okay first time you put the lights on so what you want to do you can breed them in, in in groups like this or you can um you can get a mature pair once you realize you've got a male and female you can watch them pick out which ones are working together and then take the rest out leave them in there or you can let them go as a group like I'm going to with this guys with these guys because a lot of people have them in tanks and uh, in little groups like this so uh, it's nice to see them acting as a group and um, well, I thought they were gonna spawn then under that leaf at the top there but uh, wasn't so 
You can see the male and the female there looking for somewhere to lay. Anyway, I'm going to get back to you when these guys show a little bit more signs of activity and then we'll go on from there, okay? Right, okay guys, it's first thing in the morning, just turn the lights on and hopefully we'll get some spawning action. They're looking like they're going to do a little something. She's looking under the leaves. You can see she's the big one there swimming around with the males following her. And with a bit of luck, she'll go underneath the leaves and deposit some eggs. Come on then. Here we go, under the leaf. Looking again, chasing. And there we go. She's depositing the eggs under the leaves. I'm not sure if that was successful or not. Sorry about the glare from my other tank. But these guys normally first light. This is when they're going to start chasing each other and depositing those eggs under the leaves. Here we go. Under she goes. There goes the male. Quick little twitch by at the side of her to fertilize the eggs. And then we're away. And this will happen now for a few hours. There we go. She's going to go again, maybe. Nope. This is going to happen now for maybe, sorry, about half an hour to an hour. There we go. I don't think that was a successful one. And then we'll stop and then they'll get back to feeding. I put a little bit of food in there for them just to start them off. Oh, there she goes. No male following her that time. But it's interesting for you guys to see this is how they breed. They lay the eggs on the underside of the leaves, just like she's do attempting to do there. And they'll deposit a couple of eggs there and they'll keep going back. Now she's waiting for the mail, but no one's turning up. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. Well, hopefully we'll get a little bit more action for you guys to see in a little bit. They're just zipping up there, getting a little bit of food off the surface. And then they'll get back to spawning. You can tell the males from the females. Obviously the female there is a lot plumper in the belly. But the male's fins are slightly redder than hers. And there's two males and two females in there. Sorry, three males and two females. A little bit of bickering going on between the boys. You can see they've got slightly redder fins than the female. It's not a great difference. They do, veer, they do vary. Um... You can see the males there chasing that female around the top. They'll come back into frame. Now you've got to use broadleaf plants, okay guys, for these to breed on. I use the, uh, you've got the Amazon swords or the Anubias. Any broadleaf plant, ones that hang over so they can deposit those eggs underneath like you've seen them doing a little bit earlier on. You don't need a huge tank either to breed these guys. This is just a little nano cube, which I've had going for some time. You saw the uh, I had the endless in there. Now I've made that water slightly softer. I've dropped that water down to about a, about six pH, okay? And um, they want it just slightly acidic to get them to go. Obviously from the Amazon, places like that, they're used to the darker water, some really tanned up water as well. And they prefer the softer water. So uh, you've got to get that water down and you can use rainwater for that if you can get it from a clean source or you can use RO water mixed with dechlorinated tap water adding obviously bogwood, driftwood, things of that nature almond leaves um, which will drop that pH but you've got to get it all set up and obviously we've got to get the infusoria cultures going mine's already going in my living room to my wife's disgust and because um, it stinks the place out I know you can do it various other ways but I've always used broccoli I, I find I tend to get the best um, cultures that way you put up with a bit of smell but then you get a really good culture you've got lots of food for those babies when they hatch and you're gonna have a more you're gonna have a more successful hatch rate uh, sorry survival rate of the fry that way but it's lovely to see these guys going for it putting on a show for you showing you how to do it this is the first uh, of the breeding series for this year 
like I say, I'm super busy with my shop at the moment. I'm sorry I haven't been putting out as many videos as I usually have. But it's all about money, sadly, in the world, and we need to make some money so we can survive. And, um, and the shop's doing well. So hopefully, once that goes a little bit further down the line, I'll be able to uh, organise things a little bit better and get back into making these videos a little bit more. Because I do miss making them, to be honest, I really do. Now the eggs are going to hatch the following day. Okay, that's how quick the uh, these eggs do hatch from being laid on the eggs first thing in the morning to the next following morning throughout that day they'll um, they will hatch okay and that's where you need that infusoria culture that micro life to start them off like I go on about in all my breeding videos especially with these small these smaller fish it's imperative to have a good food source or you're not going to get them uh, you're not going to get them through it otherwise now by the end when now when these have finished laying the eggs I'll go in there and I'll have a quick check around and then I'll remove them carefully because they can predate on the eggs. Sometimes they, they don't bother if you keep them well fed but they will feed on the fry, they'll predate on the fry and obviously with this cube it's got a rear filtration system in there. You can just see the grid in the top but I've got a very very fine sponge against that grid so none of the fry can get sucked into that outlet and I've got the pump turned right down so it's a very very slow return in there. So nothing goes down into the, into the back chamber. And then I'm going to remove them, put them into the bench tank, acclimate them slowly back into the bench tank, so they can live out their lives in there. And that's another one of my breeding videos ticked off the list. She's thinking about going under that leaf again. Male's pursuing her. There we go. Under they go. You'll see a quick flick when they finish. There you go. And they're out. Fantastic stuff. I'm going to let this go now. I'm going to put the kettle on, have a coffee, and then I will probably take these guys out, like I just said, put them in my bench tank, and then get back, hopefully, the following week. And, um, and I'll show you some fry. I won't do the fry super young, because they're just like little tiny shards of glass, and they'll be hiding in amongst this. If I can find them and film them, I will. But it's nicer when they're free swimming, and that normally occurs at about three days. Uh, three to four days they're going to start to uh, free swim around then. Anyway guys, we'll get back to you then, okay? 